Give me all the sunshine versus Corey Day. We'll talk about that today. Plus news from XR and Kevin Thomas Jr. The Summer Nationals continue. Uh, we're also going to answer your Flow and Mav TV questions. Let's go. Today is Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. So I've got to be honest with you, I was definitely sleeping on the 410 show at Skagit last night. It was a Dirt Cup tune-up, but I certainly wasn't expecting 35 cars and the show we ended up getting. We've got $50,000 to win coming up this weekend there at Skagit, and a lot of teams made the trip early to get some track time. There was supposed to be the whole Road to Dirt Cup series, uh, but several of those shows kind of in California and Oregon uh, were rained out, and the whole thing kind of just ended up deflated. Uh, but last night was a pretty good preview, I think, of what we could see starting Thursday night. The new promotion group at Skagit, which includes Kevin Rudine and Peter Murphy, have done a really nice job with upgrades, and the facility was in top form last night. The field included Tyler Courtney in the Works Limited 57. Obviously, the All-Stars are off right now for the next couple of weeks after Ohio Sprint Speed Week. Kerry Madsen was there in the Roth car. Uh, our YouTube friend Tanner Holmes, Trey Stark, Seth Bergman, plus the NARC and California regulars like Dominic Selzy, the Katings, Justin Sanders, the Carrick brothers, Shane Golubic, and more. With Paul Silva on the wrenches, uh, Sunshine last night went quick time. He won the dash and started on the pole of the feature. And I believe he eventually led all 30 laps officially, but was chased through a lot of the event by Corey Day. Courtney got away at the end after Day hit the front stretch wall trying to make a pass for the lead. But those two trading moves and a few sliders was really fun to watch. They both, uh, both emerged from their cars afterwards, grinning from ear to ear, and I think I was probably doing the same. Hopefully this is just the start of an epic week at Skagit. An interesting note from last night, the backstretch restarts are a little strange. I'm not sure I've seen that a whole lot before. And is that something they do regularly there? Maybe somebody watching or listening could educate me on that little wrinkle they have there at Skagit. But anyway, fun show uh, up there. I definitely need more Sunshine versus Corey Day in my life for sure. Dirt Cup starts Thursday night and will be live on Flow through the weekend. Elsewhere yesterday, there were a few news items to pick through. We'll start with the announcements from XR. Barry Braun posted to his Facebook account yesterday that the dirt samples they were waiting on from the dirt track at Texas Motor Speedway uh, to be analyzed came back unacceptable. So they are not going to race there at all in 2022 and are working towards resurfacing the track for next year. So that means no Texas Dirt Nationals, but those dates will remain on the schedule for the XR Super Series late models with racing shifting to Kokomo Speedway in Indiana. So the racing on September 19th and 20th now puts XR right in between the Lucas races at uh, Knoxville and Bronson. Obviously, th those dates were already in between uh, those two Lucas shows. But now instead of being in Texas, it's at Kokomo. So I think a lot of those Lucas teams will probably be at that event. They also shortened the Fever Heat 100 at Seward from four days to two. They shortened the Sunshine State 50 at Alltech from three days to two. And the Superior Showcase at Gondic Law is now two days, August 8th and 9th. Stock car division has been removed from the show at Alltech with the championship now concluding out in Las Vegas in November. All of those kind of ladder moves were made to be um, uh, to kind of better accommodate the racers because of all of the fuel and travel issues right now. And that was all according to XR's Dan Robinson in their release. As we probably also could have expected with XR's involvement with the racing this year at North Wilkesboro, the XR Super Series will partic uh, participate in the racetrack revival there. Uh, they're going to be there two nights, October 28th and 29th. Those will both be 20,000 to win races for the Super Late Models. So lots of schedule changes here for XR. Uh, they're uh, in response to kind of a bunch of different factors. Uh, they all seem to be the right calls, I think, here based on the nature of the sport and the world right now and obviously some of the issues they're facing. If you want to see these changes for yourself and the release, you can head over to racexr.com. And Kevin Thomas Jr.'s 2022 season has kind of been in limbo since he departed snow racing in what was supposed to be his first full season out with the All-Stars and with the Wing On. We did find out yesterday that KTJ will contest all of Indiana Sprint Week as a teammate to Carson Garrett. The USAC Speed Week runs July 22nd through the, the 30th, and KTJ is the defending miniseries champion. Uh, these will be the first USAC National Sprint Car appearances for Thomas in 2022. Over the last few weeks, we've seen KTJ run some local shows at places like Lincoln Park and Bloomington, and he's been in the Indy Race Part 71 as well. Garrett uh, himself has raced 10 times with USAC Sprint Car Series over the past two seasons. He has a best finish of 13th at Bloomington in April of 2021. His three starts this year all came at Bubba Raceway Park during winter dirt games. He did fail to transfer out of the B-Mains all three of those nights. 
If you're in the market for some racing today, the Summer Nationals continue with Week 2 kicking off tonight at Springfield Raceway. Teams had Monday off to regroup with five races scheduled this week. After tonight, we'll see them at Adams County Wednesday, Spoon River Thursday, and then two nights at Peavely on Friday and Saturday. After the first week, Bobby Pierce leads Ryan Unzicker and Dennis Herb Jr. on the late model side, and Nick Hoffman is already hurting feelings on the modified side. He leads those points by over 100 after just five races, and he has won all five of those races. I mentioned yesterday we've had eight drivers make all six late model features so far, uh, and somebody asked me if I could list who those are. So they are Pierce, Unzicker, Herb, Jason Fager, Brian Shirley, Peyton Freeman, Logan Martin, and Joe Godsey. Now we want to talk about the kind of championship situation here, and we, we're kind of wondering through all of this who's going to kind of make it to the end. You can take Herb out of that mix for the championship because there are Outlaw Nights that conflict with the Summer Nationals in July, and obviously his focus is going to be on the World of Outlaws Championship. We will see him a lot, though. That's definitely not going to change. As for the rest, I'm sure it really will just depend on how they do and their circumstances. For example, Ryan Unzicker told Connor Ferguson that they probably won't do the whole thing as he's only got one car and two engines and some of his crew guys have jobs to go back to. And I'm sure there are other similar stories like that out there on the Summer Nationals Tour. We know Pierce could do the whole thing. He's obviously won these championships before and same is true for Brian Shirley. But the question going forward will be if they are enticed to race elsewhere in the coming weeks and kind of take themselves out of contention by doing so. I think the door could possibly be open here for somebody a little unexpected to win this title. The racing all week this week will be live over on Dirt Vision. And in a few different places yesterday, I got asked about the ongoing situation between Flow Racing and Mav TV Plus, obviously something we've been talking about here over the last week or so. Things kind of like what will happen to existing subscriptions, when will the deal be announced, etc. And unfortunately, I don't have any more details than those we've kind of already talked about. And especially some of those kind of, you know, more specific things about what will happen with subscriptions and what this means for people with subscriptions for both. Those are the things I think we're probably waiting to hear about and things that need to be worked out between two parties. All signs, though, are still pointing to an impending deal. And those I've talked to around the sport are still in agreement on that. Some thought we'd see uh, the announcement last Wednesday. Others thought maybe it would happen yesterday uh, on Monday, but still nothing. The MAV-TV Plus website is basically non-existent at this point with only replays of last week's racing available there right now. And I think it's important to remember these deals can be really complicated to complete. There's a lot of moving parts here and, you know, you've got multiple platforms and different customer bases and, you know, uh, rights fees to work out and all sorts of things. So I think there's a lot of issues here that are probably still being worked out. But uh, I am curious to see what the eventual ripple effects of this move are once it's finally announced. Streaming situation around dirt racing continues to be really fluid, and this consolidation is not the last we'll see for sure. There's no clear winner right now in terms of what the right business model even is. There seem to be issues with revenue splits, as we hear about sometimes. Some events are clearly profitable on all of this in revenue generators, while others are absolutely not that. Can some of the smaller providers continue to exist? Kind of, is there enough margin for their for you know for some of those smaller players to uh, to stay in business? And I think uh, where there will be growth for the bigger players in the future is also a question mark. Uh, these are kind of just a few of the issues and things we've been talking about that surround the streamers right now, some of these questions. I still do expect this move uh, to happen uh, and to be completed soon between Flow Racing and Mav TV Plus. We'll just have to kind of wait and see when it is. That's just where we are right now. We just kind of have to be patient. Speaking of the streamers, another pretty solid night on the streaming services is on tap for this Tuesday. Dirt Vision has the Summer Nationals from Springfield, like I just mentioned. Dirt Track Digest has racing from Five Mile Point. Speed Sport has shows at Park Jefferson and Cottage Grove. And as always, there is Flow Racing 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. And if you somehow just can't get enough of hearing me talk about racing, you can hear me on the XR All Gas No Breaks podcast this week. We talked about my NASCAR career, a lot of dirt tracker stuff, and a lot of just kind of general dirt racing stuff as well. That show is available at your favorite podcast places, or you can find a link to it at dirttracker.com slash podcasts. That's it for the show today. Have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.